what it is, history, past challenges and ahead. Past challenges of the EMU, Jagdish Adhikari. The European Economic and Monetary Union, EMU, has faced several challenges since its inception. One of the most significant challenges was the sovereign debt crisis that began in 2009. The crisis was triggered by the global financial crisis and the collapse of the US housing market, which led to a sharp decline in economic activity in Europe. The crisis exposed weaknesses in the EMU's design, including a lack of fiscal integration and a lack of mechanisms to deal with asymmetric shocks. Another challenge was the Brexit referendum in 2016, which resulted in the United Kingdom's decision to leave the European Union EU. The UK's departure from the EU has created uncertainty about the future of the EMU as it is one of the largest economies in Europe and a significant contributor to the EU budget. The EMU has also faced criticism for its austerity policies. Critics argue that these policies have led to high unemployment rates, low economic growth, and social unrest in some countries. Despite these challenges, the EMU has made significant progress over the years. It has expanded from 11 member states at its inception to 19 member states today. The introduction of the euro currency has facilitated trade and investment among member states, and the EMU has helped to promote economic convergence among its members. How costly it is to be in the EMU asterisk. You cannot have your own monetary policy nor manipulate the exchange rate, Find some study or country as an example to study. Le Economic and Monetary Union, EMU, is a monetary union of 19 European Union, U, member states that have adopted the euro as their currency. The EMU has a single monetary policy, which is set by the European Central Bank, ECB, and a common exchange rate policy. The EMU's monetary policy is aimed at maintaining price stability in the euro area. As a result of joining the EMU, countries lose control over their monetary policy and exchange rate. This means that they cannot manipulate their exchange rate or print money to finance government spending. According to a study by the National Bureau of Economic Research, countries that joined the EMU experienced a significant reduction in borrowing costs, which led to an increase in investment and economic growth. However, countries that joined the EMU also lost the ability to use monetary policy to stabilize their economies during recessions. For example, Greece's entry into the EMU led to a period of low borrowing costs and high investment, but it also contributed to the country's debt crisis when it was unable to devalue its currency or print money to finance its budget deficit. The theory of optimal currency areas insists on DEF criteria when looking at the cost if fiscal policy can be used in the EMU labor mobility in the EU. If we do cost-benefit analysis, the theory of optimal currency areas is a branch of economics that studies the optimal characteristics for the merger of currencies or the creation of a new currency. It suggests that specific geographic regions may benefit from a common currency, as it would increase economic efficiency and reduce exchange rate fluctuations. The theory was developed by economists Mundell and McKinnon in the early 1960s. One. The four of them cited criteria for a successful currency union are below. Labor mobility across the region. Openness with capital mobility and price and wage flexibility across the region. A risk-sharing system such as an automatic fiscal transfer mechanism to redistribute money to areas sectors which have been adversely affected by the first two characteristics. 
participant countries have similar business cycles. In terms of fiscal policy, it is argued that a common monetary policy requires a common fiscal policy to be effective. However, this is not always feasible due to political and economic reasons. Regarding labor mobility, it is considered an essential component of an optimal currency union. Mundell noted that a currency union eliminates exchange rate flexibility as a way of responding to asymmetric regional real shocks, labor mobility, by allowing workers to move from regions hit by a negative shock to regions hit by a positive one, could then work as a substitute for flexible exchange rates 3. However, Perfect labor mobility is not necessarily welfare improving since it prevents national fiscal authorities from pursuing independent policies, opening the way to a coordination problem. Benefit on the use of single currency The single currency enhances price transparency and facilitates comparison, in particular in the era of new technologies, and thus promotes competition. More competition results in lower prices and greater innovation, in turn leading to newer and better products and services for consumers. The euro promotes stability and growth. Economic disparities among member states, whether countries are hit by shocks. The European Union HAS set a goal to reduce inequalities within and among countries, a part of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, SDGs. The SDG 10 aims to reduce inequalities in income as well as those based on age, sex, disability, race, ethnicity, origin, religion, or economic or other status within the country. The goal also addresses inequalities among countries and calls for support for safe migration and mobility of people. The European Union HAS made moderate progress towards addressing income inequalities within countries over the five-year period assessed. However, the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic may have slightly widened the income gap between rich and poor people in 2021. The trends in economic disparities between EU countries show a long-term convergence of member states in terms of GDP and income. Example of the Union's challenge, Italy, for the cost, how market discipline works, the European Economic and Monetary Union EMU, has faced several challenges since its inception. One of the most significant challenges was the sovereign debt crisis that began in 2008 and affected several member states. One, the crisis was triggered by the global financial crisis and the collapse of the US housing market which led to a sharp decline in economic activity in Europe. The crisis exposed several structural weaknesses in the EMU, including the lack of a fiscal union, inadequate banking supervision, and insufficient coordination among member states. Another challenge that the EMU has faced is economic divergence among member states. The EMU was designed to promote economic convergence among member states, but some countries have struggled to keep up with others too. This has led to concerns about the sustainability of the Eurozone and calls for greater fiscal integration. The EMU has also faced criticism for its democratic deficit. Critics argue that the EMU lacks democratic accountability and that important decisions are made by unelected officials too. This has led to calls for greater transparency and democratic oversight. Despite these challenges, the EMU has made significant progress over the years. The introduction of the euro currency in 2002 was a major milestone and the EMU has helped to promote economic integration and free trade among member states too. However, 
there is still work to be done to address the challenges facing the EMU and ensure its long-term sustainability. The cost of being in the EMU, Economic and Monetary Union, is a complex topic that depends on various factors. According to a study by Springer 1, Sweden would have borne non-negligible costs from EMU membership, exemplified by around 10% lower productivity, exports, investment, and consumption, as well as 8% greater government expenditure and imports on a yearly basis since the introduction of the euro. However, it is important to note that this study was conducted in 2017 and may not reflect the current situation. Conclusion While past discussions on EMU tended to emphasize its role in limiting the impact of the global financial crisis on the euro area countries, the focus has now shifted to the destabilizing effects threatening the entire eurozone as a consequence of the dire fiscal situation in some weaker member countries, notably Greece. Will the EMU be able to pass the first serious challenge it faces or is it a fair weather construction with basic design flaws? What options are available to policymakers? European Monetary Fund to deal with Euro area member countries in financial difficulties is superior to the option of muddling through on the basis of ad hoc measures, like the ones taken by the European Council in February and March of this year. Without a clear framework, decisions about how to organize financial support typically have to be taken hurriedly, under extreme time pressure and often during a weekend when the turmoil in financial markets has become unbearable. We see two key advantages of our proposal. First, the funding of the EMF should give clear incentives for countries to keep their fiscal house in order at all times. Secondly, and perhaps even more importantly, the EMF could provide for an orderly sovereign bankruptcy procedure that would minimize the disruption resulting from a default. Both these features would decisively lower the moral hazard problem that pervades the present situation in which both the markets and the Greek government assume that, in the end, they can count on a bailout because the EU could not contemplate the bankruptcy of one of its members. We should by now have learned that the best way to prevent failure is to prepare for it. We have concentrated in this contribution on the key policy functions for the EMF and have neglected other aspects, such as its organizational and legal form. It would of course be indispensable to give the EMF a professional staff able to operate independently from politics, much like the IMF. However, solutions for these organizational and legal issues can be found if there is consensus on the basic policy issues. Reaching such a consensus should be the main aim of the task force of government representatives instituted by the European Council of March. Our proposal is not meant to constitute a quick fix for the specific case of Greece. The country has deep-seated problems which will take years to address properly. Nonetheless, if the EMF were to be set up within the next 12 months, it might still come in time to provide a clearer framework even for this case. However, our main concern is to prepare the euro area for the coming decades, which are likely to be characterized by a generalized deterioration in public finances throughout the EU, given the joint effects of aging and lower growth. Other problem cases are thus likely to arise sooner rather than later. The experience of Argentina shows that default arises only after a lengthy period of several years in which economic and political difficulties interact and reinforce each other. Failure is not inevitable, 
as the relatively successful experience so far with tough adjustment programs in Ireland and Latvia shows. But what is unavoidable is a considerable period of uncertainty. With an EMF, the EU would be much better prepared to face these difficult times. References Economic costs and benefits of EMU membership from the perspective of a non-member vertical bar open economies review, springer.com.